back now. Look here, see. Here's the big question, I think. <clears throat> Why not bypass all of this talk and simply make the transition directly to the one? Therefore, end all distinctions. But you see, he's ending all distinctions too. You see, this is using the mind to persuade the mind that it's not at war or in some ridiculous reality. Because he says very clearly, when we contain no difference, or what I would say when we're no longer attached to any difference, then without difference, we know what is. Now, that's negative when we contain no difference. That's negative. That's not any different than what the Buddhist would be saying when he says, stamp out everything in your mind. When he depreciates the mind, only he's doing it negatively. Reason and understanding shows how you can understand why you have to go beyond it. And therefore, you're not at war with understanding, and you're not at vari you're, you are not <clears throat> in opposition or in ver in, at variance with your own mind or That's intellect. Right. The Buddhists talk about annihilating thoughts, yeah. much like a double-edged sword, chopping yeah. the thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. Very, yeah, is it a war yeah. image? Uh, yeah, says uh, uh, the mind, uh, uh, thoughts are the sickness of the mind. And uh, this is saying, oh, sure, but you don't have to knock it down so much. You can understand, you can go through understanding and put things in its place so that you are then bringing yourself harmoniously up through this. Because the problem That's in... That's the dropping away then. Dropping yeah. it. Yeah. It's like a process of dropping it. Or our understanding its particular role and how it functions and it doesn't have to be other than what it is. And when that takes place, you're not at war with yourself. Mm -hmm. And uh, see, because uh, especially in, in the, if anyone was to be really consistent about it, they wouldn't even deny intellect. because that's using words. And you can't have a koan <laughs> system to deny words. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's true. You can't give lectures and mm, tokusans and all of those yeah. things and, yeah. and uh, deny the use of the mind. So that this is a harmonious way of blending. And this is the Platonic, Neoplatonic tradition. And so I made some copies of some major sections of Plotinus what I'd like to pass out to you. And uh, if you have any questions while I pass these around, please let me have them. We'll have some fun with them. Where are these uh, quotes from? That you use? These are all from the essential Plotinus of O'Brien's translation. And uh, it's a very beautiful translation. This is a complete set. And you can take one and pass this around. And take one more and pass that around. No, no, she already oh, has a set. Thank you. Oh, she has Last a set. One. Should have three pieces of paper oh, when you okay. finish. The colors are the result of a Xerox machine. The material is the same. Now, I wanted to get you to look at just a very beautiful section. Yes, yes.
<clears throat> I'm on page 88, conclusion. Now, he's in this, he's talking about this state, the transition from the pure light of being to the one. Now, the realm of intelligence is said to be an image of the one. Now, if you look upon yourself in this state, you find yourself an image of the one. If you rise beyond yourself, an image rising to its model you have reached the goal of your journey. When you fall from this vision, you will, by arousing the virtue that is within yourself and by remembering the perfection that you possess, retain your likeness and through virtue rise to the intelligence and through wisdom to the one. Such is the life of the divinity and the divine and blessed men. Detachment from all things here below, scorn of all earthly pleasures, the flight of the lone to the alone. And that's his famous quote, the flight of the lone to the alone. I'm now on 84. As the one does not contain any difference, it's always present. And we are present to it when we no longer contain difference. The one does not aspire to us to move around us. We aspire to it to move around it. Actually, we always move around it, but we do not always look. We are like a chorus grouped about a conductor who allowed there a attention to be distracted by the audience. If, however, they were to turn towards their conductor, they would sing as they should and would really be with him. We are always around the one. If we were not, we would dissolve and cease to exist. Yet our gaze does not remain fixed upon the one. When we look at it, we then attain the end of our desires and find rest. Then it is that all discord past, we dance an inspired dance around it. Wow. That's my contribution. Um, he is an absolutely beautiful writer. He's the beauty that this man is able to put and the way he can express himself about the most profound of subjects places him way up above the most philosophers and history of philosophy into the truly greats. So, thank you. Thank you. They don't study Plotinus much, do they? Pardon me? He hasn't studied much.